Hello and welcome to the Integrative Health Convention 2019 online interviews. Today we're going to find out more about an integrative approach to cancer from Patricia Pete, who's speaking at the Integrative Health Convention 2019 on the weekend of the 5th and 6th of October 2019 at the Park Plaza Victoria in central London. This is Patricia Pete, who runs the Cancer Options Consultancy that helps people information on how to integrate complementary and conventional approaches to support cancer care. Her website is uh, canceroptions.co.uk and we'll put the links below. Hi, Patricia, thank you for joining us. Hi, very welcome. Um, should we begin by letting our audience know a little bit more about yourself and what you do? My background uh, was in, in conventional medicine. I was uh, an oncology nurse for many years, running chemotherapy clinics. And um, mainly through uh, my clients or patients, as I would term them then, who were integrating different approaches, I begin to get an appreciation for the value of integrative support. But what was very clear at the time, and, and this is actually 20 years ago now, uh, that I set cancer options up, was that people were struggling to get um, quality information. They were struggling to get information about approaches that were had validity and were well research based and also, you know, potentially harmful ones to avoid. And I, be, you know, I began to get very frustrated with myself that, like many of my colleagues, I was completely unable to answer people's questions. And people were wanting to support and empower themselves, you know, through treatment and and onwards um, to recover afterwards. And we were clueless, frankly, as um, and 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 a little um, a little dismissive, or a lot dismissive in some cases. And uh, you know, I've I, I just found that that was enormously limiting. Um, I don't feel that uh, conventional medicine has all the answers. When it comes to dealing with cancer, so um, cancer options was a was it was a sort of evolution from that in trying to find answers and help people. And I uh, say so we've been you know working in this area now 20 years, keeping very much up to date on all the developments and linking um, the information that's out there to the person's situation, to their type of cancer, because that's very important, and um, very much on an individual basis, helping them put together a, a a program that they feel in charge of, that they feel they you know they have control of, and that also is not overwhelming them and affecting their quality of life because that is also something that complementary medicine can do. So we try and you know fi fi find the middle ground for everybody. Brilliant. Um, I'm always interested can, in the story behind how you started doing what you do now. Can you tell me a little bit more about this? Yeah, it's um, it, it 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 comes down to one one patient really, Gillian. Uh, Gillian was uh, I, I I was running oncology clinic, and she was a lady who uh, she had colorectal cancer um, with liver metastases, and she was having chemotherapy in Nottingham, which is where I was working at the time. And uh, she was actually working in London, so she would and lived in Nottingham. So she'd come up to us about every three weeks for her treatment. And in between that, as I as I got to know, but she didn't tell the doctors or share with the doctors, she was doing quite a lot of integrative support while she was away. She was having a good diet. She was using supplements. Uh, she was having some intravenous work in London. And um, Gillian used to arrive on, on arrive in my oncology clinic and the doors would burst open and this rush of energy would come in, bright eyes and full of life and full of energy. Well, the, a lot more than I had, to be perfectly honest. And I began to think, well, you know, maybe, uh, maybe there's something in this and uh, we shouldn't be dismissing it as such. And I have fond memories of standing outside um, um uh, her, her the door to her room with the oncologist i was working with at the time and we were looking at the ct scans and uh he was going you know he said patricia he says this is this is this is this is my best ever patient you know she's she's just surviving so long and so well and um you know which he thought was entirely due to the chemotherapy drugs. <laughs> and so so we, I, I congratulated him and said, well done, well done. Um, but, you know, it was very clear to me that uh, the whole thing was being brought together by what she'd done. And not only was she staying well, 
but she was influencing the outcome. And at the time, I didn't know at all the science behind that in terms of how the different elements she brought together was actually influencing the environment of the of, of the cancer cells and was actually influencing the impact chemotherapy could have on those both on 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 her surviving it well and actually on the cancer cells as well i now do and it's still a, a, a an area of frustration and this is why you know this conference is fantastic i'm thrilled to be asked and thank you um that we need to be able to share the information that actually uh this 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 method of integrating and supporting people is not only valid it's it's absolutely essential you know if we want people to do well and 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 have quality of life it's essential mm, absolutely and in uh, october at a Integrative Health Convention at Apart Plaza, you're going to talk about integrative support with cancer. Can yep. you tell us a little bit more about what this is about and what the audience will gain out of it? Um, well, first of all, I will be looking at and explaining the, the theory behind how, how cancer works in the body how cancer cells can manipulate, they're manipulating the environment in which they're in. Cancer cells um, are masters of l manipulating that environment to get what they need. So they create a very, they metabolize glucose and create a very inflammatory, hypoxic um, environment that not only aids the cancer cells in every way, but can also interfere with both the immune system working and, and chemotherapy and radiotherapy working. So we'll be looking at that to set the background for that. And then, I mean, I, I could talk on any one subject for about six hours without stopping. There's so much to tell people, but obviously I'm gonna to have to be a bit concise. So then um, hopefully looking at um, both how chemotherapy and radiotherapy can be supported. The person could be supported through those. As a generalization, it, obviously there's individual variances um, with each type of drug, etc and also for um, time allowing have a look at one or two different types of cancer and how the support varies according to the type of cancer so that's that's kind of what we'll try and uh, try and get across within that um, whilst bringing in the evidence to support this for example um, delightfully now if you go on cancer research uk's website they have um, in clinical trial a drug for lung cancer which encourages oxygen in the body I'm a very big fan of oxygen therapy and um, oxygen aids people's recovery and response to treatment tremendously. And they actually state on the Cancer Research UK's website now that cancer actually exists in a low oxygen environment. And if you can oxygenate the body, chemotherapy and radiotherapy work better. So it's great to see now that this research is actually creeping in to the orthodox world and uh, is being well supported and the same with nu nutrition um the importance of the importance of good nutrition which of course is you know absolutely vital and our medical profession is still struggling to get its head around to some extent mm. so we'll be trying to get across as much of that in in in, in the time we've got as uh, as possible wonderful so having thought about the integrated health convention where the audience will be made of doctors therapists and the public where do you see um your particular approach fitting in with integrative health well i you know i th i ideally you know i think i think we're a little well we're a little or a lot behind in this country compared to what's going off in other countries um when you actually you know i i had a client's daughter say to me recently you know she says well you know it's not rocket science is it and uh, it's you know it's it's, it's it's absolutely not rocket science it's um it's it's what we see happening elsewhere is this has become the norm of support and what you call survivorship programs afterwards has become the norm but of course the problem has been there's been no forum for information gathering and sharing and i don't think our, our, our medical profession have in any way been made aware of actually there is is both research and good sense behind things and on one hand, you will never gain a randomized double blind trial that will, you know, absolutely prove something is effective against cancer. 
the message we need to get across to people is if you incorporate different elements and look at uh, the ways in which different metabolic pathways that cancer use can be influenced, you can actually build uh, from small elements a strong program. You know, there isn't, you know, like you sometimes get in the complementary world, this one great approach that, oh, you know, if you do this, cancer will be cured. It's the sort of thing you come across on the internet. Oh, that's, you know, that's, of course, nonsense. Um, but if you bring together many different elements, and very much including the person feeling empowered and in control of what they're doing and understanding it, the, 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 the program becomes greater than the sum of its parts. And we see people do really well compared to, you know, statistically how they how they might do so you know I, th I think it's you know if we can get the information across to people that it's 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 scientifically valid and and and, and it doesn't cause issues um, there's a lot of fear about working uh, integratively with cancer a lot of practitioners tell me that they're, they're, they're scared off it because they're told they may they may cause problems and actually the evidence is that no um, you know it can help tremendously. I mean, a good example of this um, is if you look at the moment at the new immunotherapies that um, are being brought into use um, at great expense, there's nothing cheap goes off on that side of the uh, on, on, on that side of, uh, of, of cancer. And the apart from some exceptions like melanoma, uh, renal cancer, perhaps um, the the across the board response is not great. It's less than 20 percent, which is poor. It's poor, um, and part of that is 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 that you know people have immune suppressed suppressed immune systems, and then are given immunotherapy. Well, on its own, it's not going to do it. And fascinatingly, in America, the um, PDL1 receptor drugs, which are you know enormously promising, uh, they're actually now starting studies of using sodium bicarbonate alongside it to affect that cellular environment and allow the drug to work. You know, which is you know, which which is which is just brilliant. So, um, that's that's really important. But what's very important as well is that the still the actual human cost of cancer treatment is too high. The side effect profiles are too high on on every element, and I don't think enough time and effort has been looked into helping people cope with that. You know, the dropout rate from hormone therapies. Um, tamoxifen is 50% within two years. That's shocking. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, the you know the arthralgia that people get on um, on on other hormone therapies, um, you know, uh, can have a serious effect on their quality of life. You know, people say to me they feel like they've aged. You know, they've aged to age 90. You know, in a matter of weeks when they start these therapies, and they're told they're going to be on them for 10 years, um, and they stop taking them and that's not great. We need people to not, you know, to be able to help them stay with therapies, not to not to discount them because they're suffering too much. And then there are approaches that the complementary therapies can help with. Yeah, yeah, they're all, all things that can be helped with. A lot of it comes down to basic concepts, inflammation, hypoxia, poor nutrition. Um, we do functional testing on people who've been through, well, we do it at any time, but when people have been through chemotherapy, it is astonishing what you see has happened to the body because, of course, conventional medicine just gives the treatment and leaves, you know, leaves people to get on with it. And what we find constantly, metabolic syndrome, low vitamin D levels, even if they're supplementing because they're not metabolizing, massive gastric inflammation, which st stopping absorption, all these things need to be addressed. Because if that's the situation in the body, how is that body going to prevent cancer recurring? Mm. You know, giving chemotherapy and radiotherapy is doing half the job. You know, people really need support with doing the rest of it. And that, that you know, and that's that's where they get get great benefit, I think. Wonderful. So I'm asking one uh, last question. As a therapist, uh, well, and a teacher with years of experience, I mean, you've been doing what you, you said for 20 years now. And what yeah. do you think, yeah, what do you think, uh, Patricia, is, in particular, is the key to healing or people getting better in what you do so i'm looking for something personal as what you think makes the most difference what makes the most difference is the person it's the person it's and and this is 
um, an area that we're working on now because everything we've focused on so far has been sort of quite biochemically based. And part of that is to, that's where the research is. And that is what we can use to convince the medical profession. But to my mind, because what people need to, to do is really to know that everything that is out there in terms of drugs and, and diets and supplements are just tools to be used. You know, the answers aren't there. The answers are with the person being able to use that, but bring that together in a way that they can empower themselves and learn to become their own healers. Mm. Because the people I worry about most is not so much the cancer, but the people who are frozen with fear. You know, the way we deal with cancer generally, the whole medical approach causes a tremendous amount of fear. Of mm. course it does. And because the person's role in that is, 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 is very passive, you are given treatment. You're told when you're having treatment, treatment starts, treatment stops, you have all the side effects. Um, the person's role in that is very passive, so they become disempowered. And being able to utilize the mind alongside the body in healing, I, I believe is very, very powerful. But we need to be able to support people in a way that they can move forwards. Mm and and realize and you know a lot of a lot of decisions about what to do are based on fear rather than growth mm. and you know i i strongly believe you know i you know when i'm sitting doing consultations with people you know i sometimes find myself smiling because i'm thinking yeah you've got it you've got it you know you 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 know you're you're there you're you're going to be able to move forward and pull all these different elements together and take charge and um and other people not, they're still sort of tell me what to do, um, you know, but my doctor has said I'm not going to do well, um, you know, and doc, you know, the medical profession is, has become very, very, very prevalent these days at telling people you do realize, you know, this is, this is, this is only part, you know, you do realize this is not going to work for long, etc. And it's a very honest approach, but it's hammering home a message. And I think we need to balance that out that message out that people actually do have a role to play here so that's that's the most important part for me thank you thanks for everyone for taking the time to watch and listen to this interview so remember to get your tickets early now from our website by following the links below we are the integrative health convention at the park plaza victoria in london on the weekend of the 5th and 6th of october 2019 you can use the discount code video5 which will give you a five percent discount as a gift from us to you for sharing your time with us today. So uh, when you see myself, uh, Patricia, in London in October, it will we'll, uh, speak to you more then, and you'll get to see all our over 30 speakers and all the huge selection of talks that you get to choose from during this time. We'll see you then. Thank you.